my question to you is uh where where are these 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 revenue leaks? What sort of form do they 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 take, and and what sort of impact are they having on the federal budget? Sure. So, I mean, I think people need to recognize how low tax of a country the United States actually is um, compared to other OECD countries, where you know we're really near the bottom. Um, but that being said, you know we do we do still have a pretty progressive tax structure, so. You know, a good chunk of the American people don't feel the pinch uh, of the IRS very much. I mean, what taxes they do pay are primarily payroll taxes or excise taxes or their state and local um, taxes. But, you know, the at the federal level, if we're going to talk federal taxes, um, we spend a lot of time thinking about tax cuts in the United States. You know, there is so many, so many policies that are actually being done and pursued through the tax code. Uh, we'll give a tax break for this, a tax break for that. Um, and we don't do it through spending programs. So that just means, you know, you will need more revenue in other ways because we, are, we keep opening these little holes in the tax code um, in a lot of different places. That being said, besides tax breaks and tax credits, we also have pretty insufficient tax enforcement in the United States. There's a, there's a big tax gap of what people ostensibly owe and what they actually actually pay. Um, and a fiscally responsible tax code means tackling all of these pieces. It means tackling enforcement. It means closing um, tax breaks and credits, but also making sure that you can, you know, if I use a metaphor like a bucket, if we punched a whole bunch of holes in the bucket, you still need to also make sure water is coming into the bucket, which is economic growth. So you need all of those pieces together because just one of them isn't going to necessarily solve it. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think is is kind of difficult here is obviously one of the easiest ways to plug the holes is just to simplify the tax code, right? If you take away all these ex exceptions and 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 uh, one off provisions, but Bill Gill over at Brookings recently just put out a paper where he really demonstrates how tax simplification makes it really hard to meet other competing goals of. You know, for simplicity, but also progressivity and fairness. You know, he gives the example. You know, suppose that you want to subsidize childcare costs, but you don't want to give money to people that they can then spend on ski school for their kids at Aspen, right? So you've got to write these these exceptions and and phase in. You know, and maybe you don't want to provide support for the uber wealthy, so you've got to write in these these uh, phase ins and phase outs. So how I'm just wondering, you know, how do you balance this tension between wanting to plug all these holes, but also wanting a, a tax code that is progressive uh, and and is fair? Do you do you see anybody who's leading on these efforts? Do you are do you have any solutions or you know or, or contributions to to the debate about what we should be looking at? I mean, it's a great question, but and unfortunately, I don't have a great answer because <laughs> everyone everyone is looking out for their own individual interests in the tax code, whether that's companies and their specific tax breaks, whether that's a politician and his specific his or her specific tax break or credit that they put in in a in a bill and are trying to extend. You know, we deal with tax policy um, all the time in Congress because we set it to expire for a variety of reasons. Um, and then it just creates all these um, moments for horse trading or log rolling where, okay, I'm gonna trade your credit for my credit. And we've actually made the situation worse, not better. Um, that's where we're, that's what we're looking at right now for, for 2025. The Trump tax cuts will expire, or at least the individual income tax side of the Trump tax cuts are gonna expire in 2025, which means that, you know, unless thing, unless, we act on that, taxes will go up for people and that's no fault of Congress's. That would just be what happens if they don't do anything. But how that horse trading takes place after the after this election is gonna be really interesting. And you know, that's the big focus of 2025. And that's what I, it's part of why I actually wrote this piece is because mm -hmm. we all have to get on the same page. What is everyone's ask at the end of the day uh, uh, when the Trump tax bill expires? And I'm trying to get Democrats to say, my ask is we don't make the debt situation worse. Mm 